here's how to use the dodge, burn and sponge brush tools in Affinity Photo. Okay, so we've got a nice wide panorama here and what I really want to do is enhance the tones and colours and also increase the contrast between the lit area in the valley here and the area in shadow which is the foreground. And I can do that using these three tools. So to begin with we have the dodge brush tool on the toolbar here. I can long click to gain access to the burn brush and the sponge brush too. So we'll start with the dodge brush. I'll increase the brush width using the right bracket key. Alternatively, you can adjust it using the width option up here on the context toolbar. Okay, then we've got the tonal range. Now for this image, because I'm trying to enhance the lit area, I want to change this to highlights. And then finally, we can also modify the opacity, which is the strength of the effect. Now for this image, 25% is about perfect because it allows us to layer up the brush strokes and I'll show you what I mean. So if I just start click dragging and dodging over the middle here, I'll then hold space and click drag to pan to the other areas in the image and just dodge them too. Okay, then I can move back to the middle and because I have a low opacity, it means I can build up the strokes further. So if I go over this area again, it brightens it even more. So now I've managed to achieve a brightening in the middle. So it looks like the sunlight is more intense in the middle of the valley as opposed to the sides. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now I'll switch to the burn brush to darken the foreground areas. So for this, I'll set the tonal range to shadows. And also I'll need to increase the opacity. So I'll bring it up to about 70%. And that gives me a stronger effect as I just burn the areas down here. Once again, just holding space to pan across the panorama. And also I'll just burn these areas at the side two. Okay, I'll perhaps just go back to the middle and layer up some more brush strokes here. But overall, I'm quite happy with that. So now we'll enhance the colour. And for that we can use the sponge brush. Okay, so as I hover over here we just get a real-time preview that shows us that we can saturate the yellows and the greens in the lit area here. And that looks quite nice. Now, depending on the type of image, uh, you might find the effect isn't strong enough. Here we've got the opacity set to 70%. So again, we can tweak the opacity, but also by default, this brush works on vibrance, which avoids extreme color clipping. You can, however, change it to saturation and the effect when you're brushing will be more pronounced. We'll leave it on Vibrance for now, and we'll just brush into the middle area here. And then off to the sides, I think we'll just reduce the opacity to about 40%, just so the effect is a bit more subtle. And again, what we're achieving here is directing the eye to the middle of the panorama. Okay. So once all is said and done, I can use the history panel here and just roll back to the beginning before I started making any edits so that we can better appreciate the before and after. So here is the initial image. Then if I move to the final history entry, that's the effect that we've created using those three tools. So there we go, just a quick primer on using the dodge, burn and sponge brush tools.